I was having some issues here with the Deutz Alice and it's got a leak in a hydraulic line and I was trying to figure out where it's leaking and what I found is that down here in this neck of the woods this line got pinched over here between the loader frame and the tractor and it's evidently developed a leak so I was afraid that both lines were pinched but this one here is not leaking it just got wet from the other one leaking so what I'm going to do here is uh, pop this line off it's the one that goes down to the pump down here and see if we can go down to like the local auto parts store and get a new one made but it originates up here actually down here is where it originates and it goes down here you can see it's in a tight spot down there and it must have just got pinched and then it goes down here to the front axle where the pump is so it's kind of in a tight spot but I gotta see what size wrench it is and I'm not sure if all the fluids gonna drain out of this reservoir here how much fluid is actually gonna come out but I wanted to change the fuel or the uh, the fluid anyway so I bought a new filter and I actually bought a five gallon pail of fluid at Tractor Supply, so let's see what we got. All right, so I got the line off and uh, you can see clearly that right where it was hitting that metal there, it definitely pinched it and broke it. Oops, I'm getting oil out. So what I'm gonna do is just go down to my local auto parts store where they make lines and hopefully they can just make me up one. Last time I had one made for my Quickway loader, it was about half this length, and it cost about 20 bucks or so, so it wasn't the end of the world, but, you know, it's all about the fittings from what I understand on the end here. They're the expensive part, so hopefully they got one with the same uh, thread as this, and we should be good to go. So, we'll see what happens. Well, I got some new hydraulic lines for the Deutz Alice here. And I went down to my local auto parts store and they made one. It cost me about 50 bucks to have a three foot line made, so it sucks, but I'll show it to you guys. See, this is the new line here, which is made out of a Gates half inch hose. And they crimped on these new ends on there. This hose is a little bit different style than the old hose where this new hose looks like a garden hose. And this old hose kind of has like this wrapped design in there. I never even checked it. I just trusted that it was correct. And it looks like it's pretty spot on to me. So anyway, so I'm going to go outside and see if we can put this sucker on there. It's only about 30 degrees out, so it's a little chilly this morning. But nonetheless, I want to get this thing mounted and see if we can get the loader down to the garage from the backyard and work on changing out the hydro fluid next. All right, so I got the new hose on and it fits in here nicely. I'm gonna have to put something on here to keep it away from getting down in here where it got pinched last time. And I was thinking, you know, can I put something in there like uh, some foam or something so that it fills up that little gap, but that's really the the main issue is keeping it out of that gap and as far as draining the fluid this is really a poor setup here so the reservoir for the tank is in this column here and you think that there'd be some kind of drain plug at the bottom to let it out and there's not I mean I had the line off over here which is pretty much the lowest point of the system and nothing was coming out my filter's up here, which I'm gonna take off in a minute. Let's see, I'll just put this under here and see if we can get that filter off. But there's not really any junk or any, uh, any what do you call it here, any uh, fluid that should be up this high. Probably it's just gonna be what's in the filter. Yeah, that's about it, you know. There's a little drain plug here, but 
why would it drain out here when I already had it drained out on the bottom? And the line at the pump down at the front, gravity-wise, is the lowest point of the whole system. So I think what happened is that the fluid drained out of the hose, and uh, that's why I'm not getting anything out of this thing. Um, I am going to try to take off that little uh, plug here. I think it's a 7 sixteenths. No, oh, it's a 3 eighths, but damn, that thing's in there. Whew, that's a tight one. Let's see what happens here. Nothing should come out. Because like I said, it's uh, not the lowest point. Let's prove my theory here. Yeah, nothing. It's dry as a bone. So I think what I'm going to do is put my new Napa filter on it here. The old filter was a CarQuest filter. And the former owner had it serviced at the actual... Uh, Deutz Alice uh, dealership, which is a town over from me here. He had bought this thing used when he got it But it only has 500 and something hours on it right now, and he had it for 20 years plus I've had it for about five years, and I probably put five hours on it in five years, so Let's look at this nice new filter here. We got a Napa Gold 1269 hydraulic filter And it comes in this nice little wrapper here and what I'm actually going to do is fill it up with fluid before I put it on the machine. I've got a five gallon jug of fluid at tractor supply. Let's see. So this should be our, our deal here. Yep, that'll fit on there perfect. And the Napa filters are actually made by Wix. And uh, it says made in USA on here, which is awesome. After talking to the guy at Napa, who's a smart guy, I got to fill in where the battery died here. So he told me that the CarQuest filters were actually made by Wix also, but CarQuest got bought by Advanced Auto Parts and they stopped selling the Wix hydraulic filters. Maybe they just didn't sell enough to find it worth their while. So Napa has a crossover from the CarQuest part to Napa and that's what I got. Well, guys, my battery died on my phone, so we're going to the GoPro now. So I got this jug of fluid here at Tractor Supply. I'm going to try to be smart and pour some into this little uh, container here and then maybe fill it with that. Because a five-gallon jug versus this little filter is going to make a spill. I know that for sure. And let me see if I can even do this. There we go. It's not so bad. Oh, this stuff is thick. It's cold out. I think I said before, it's only about 30 degrees out this morning. So it's not really optimal for playing with oil. Okay, that's enough. Let's see. I mean, this is meant to fill up a bulldozer or something, not a Dwight's Alice here. So let's see what we got back here. I got all this crap back here. I got a work on cleaning this mess and uh never really got to a lot of these projects this year uh oh it's starting to rain crap all right let's see if we can fill this sucker up we whoop there we go perfect now let's see if we can lube up the old seal here and then we'll uh get this thing hooked up over here Let's see there we go nice yeah I got a problem with my iPhone in the cold I know I talked about this last year but I'm out here for about two minutes with it and the battery dies and I kind of researched it and it's a known bug I brought it inside and literally just plugged it into the charger and it went up to 60% right away all right so we got that and then the rest of the fill area is in this pipe here. Let me see if I can get this going. It's kind of a bitchy thing. But there's... Oh, it's sleet or something. Oh, man, that sucks. Let's see. There's like this weird cap on here. And there's actually a little screen in there. And I should be using a funnel, but I'm going to be an idiot. And then you got to basically... 
you know, fill up this reservoir here with fluid, which I'm assuming is going to take a lot because I think it's got to fill up this whole, you know, reservoir on the side here. But it should take a couple of these things worth at a minimum. Let's see. Tractor's out of gas also, so I got to put some gas in it. I had it running last weekend and it ran for about 10 minutes and it just died because it was out of gas. I never like to put a lot of gas in it. Oops, it overflowed it because I don't use it a lot. And I don't want it to fill up with ethanol because I've already de-ethanoled the carb about six times in this thing in the couple years that I've owned it. My dream is always to move snow with it in the winter and it never fails that it won't start in the winter. Last year it had that problem with the mouse nest in there. The year before the car was full of ethanol. It would only run on full choke and didn't have enough power to do a thing. So I think this year maybe we'll get lucky. Anyways guys, I'll put you down until we get this sorted out or filled up. And we'll come back when we're going to start the motor and we'll go from there, alright? 